All right. Um, our group number five, we had Uber uh, by Nick Sari, Ryan Leach, Amelia Lawrence, Tori Sorensen, Jackson Sager. Uh, so I had the history of the company. Uh, how did Uber begin? So uh, Travis Kalnick and uh, Garrett Camp were in Paris during a snowstorm and uh, they couldn't get a taxi. So they were kind of frustrated and they were thinking about how, how they can make it easier. So they decided that they're going to try to make an app where you can get a taxi right from your phone. Um, why is it called Uber? Uh, they named it Uber. Um, the original name was actually Uber Cabs, and then they changed it to just Uber. And the German word for Uber is actually Supreme. Um, Uber took a hyper local approach uh, in the United States. So they started in San Francisco and then they slowly moved out, make, making sure that they perfected it in every city that they went to. Uh, Uber has expanded from San Francisco to 83 different countries with over three, 3 million drivers and 75 million customers. Um, Uber Eats is actually a new thing that was just implemented in 2014. And uh, Uber Eats is in 6,000 US cities, 23 countries, and has 600,000 restaurants. So Uber's average annual revenue is right around $11 billion a year with over 5 billion rides. Um, <clears throat> and it just keeps growing year after year. Um, Uber Eats was launched in 2014, as I said. Um, it launched in San Francisco and it's uh, been struggling. It's been, uh, can't turn a profit very well uh, just due to environmental issues with like uh, COVID and things like that impacting. And uh, they also have a uh, big competition with like Postmates, Grubhub, DoorDash, things like that. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the environmental analysis. Uh, first, I'm gonna mention global and international implications. There are many countries that currently don't allow Uber to operate there because it will not be helping their economies at all. Uh, although, with that being said, Uber does still operate in more than 85 countries. Um, but there are still some major country or major cities that Uber is not allowed to operate because, like I said, it does not benefit their uh, economies. But they do plan on eventually operating in more countries than they are. So with economic factors, Uber kind of goes hand in hand with the economy uh, because as the economy is good, Uber the growth of the company is up and if the economy is going down, the growth of the company is not good and they're kind of at a stalemate, not doing very well. Um, since its initial launch, Uber has done uh, extremely well as far as their growth and their being known and the amount of people using them. Uh, there are many people studying right now whether this type of uh, new this type of company brings new careers or takes away from previous careers that have already been there. Uh, as Uber grows larger, other platforms like Lyft and regular taxi cabs fight to stay relevant. Uh, the, those are their main competitive factors, so now I'll get into that. Uh, there are many competitive forces besides Lyft and your regular taxi cabs, but those are just the main two that we we're going to talk about. Uh, Uber is better than both of them because they cover a wider range of places and their costs are fairly lower than Lyft and your regular taxi cab. And Uber is currently at the top of the list out of all transportation services and adding Uber Eats has just put them up even higher. And as you can see there down at the bottom that shows Uber's global footprint where they're currently operating in what countries and a little bar graph showing how much cheaper they are for rides in just some big cities. Next slide. All right, so with technological factors, Uber is mainly maintained and run through their uh, mobile app. Without their mobile app, Uber wouldn't really be able to operate because that is where uh, customers get updates and that's how they schedule rides, see who their driver is, et cetera. Social media has also been a um, big factor in spreading the word of Uber. Tourists have been searching for cheaper transportations online and Uber has uh, came to be that option. 
through the app, passengers can pay for their rides with credit cards straight, straight on the app so they don't have to pay in cash when they get into the Uber, making payments much easier and less contact, especially right now with COVID. Um, if Uber's app had a malfunction or failure, Uber would not be able to function because nobody would be able to schedule rides, get updates, and everything like that. Uh, the future Uber Eats was also added on their mobile app where customers can order food and get that delivered to any locations that they would like. <laughs> their app also shows traffic and weather in the locations that they currently are, so they can see things like that, whether they want to travel if the roads are bad or anything like that. Uh, with socio-cultural factors, the customer base for Uber is extremely diverse. Any person can use Uber at any time of the day or whenever they want. There are not many cultural factors or beliefs that currently affect people using Uber, other than they simply just don't trust getting into a vehicle with a stranger. Um, and one thing that does help them is you're able to view the driver's profiles, which that does make customers feel more safe, but still, like I said, some people do not trust that. And with Uber being available at all times, people tend to mainly use their services. And there's a little comparison to Lyft showing uh, the, fare, the cost per mile and things like that. And as you can see, Uber offers many more types of cars and user experience, and they are about 50-50 with male and female. Next slide. So the current marketing objectives of Uber is to they want to start moving their company to a more eco-friendly vehicle. So what, is the, what that means is kind of like they don't want to be using gasoline anymore. They want to be using that more uh, eco-friendly fuel or even moving to electrical cars as well. They also want to give the best customer experience they can. And they also want to make it a safe and affordable ride for their customers. Right now, the performance of Uber they're currently beating out most competitors they have, like uh, Lyft and the other taxi companies, they're beating them out. Uh, they actually were one of the first people to get into the ride market, other than initial taxi companies. They were the first ones to kind of privatize it in the sense of it's not that classic yellow taxi where it's one set fare for however long you go. And ever since it entered the market, they have been the leaders. Next slide, please. So their current target market, they're in the food delivery service, the ride sharing, the mail and delivery, the business ease, and the rental of electric scooters and bikes. And the segmentation of it is they're creating a more marketing strategies, coming up with new ideas and products, as we will tell you later in the video. And they have the most affordable rides. Uh, next slide, please. I want all their rides to be 100% zero emission by 2030 in the UK, US, and Canada. And they plan on using zero emission cars only by the year 2040. And they have a very strong ethical code at Uber. And they do not discriminate against any driver or passengers. And there are harsh recommendations if ethical code is broken. Next slide, please. Uh, now the marketing mix of Uber. So the place of the of Uber is constantly, it's always from producer to consumer in one step. It is an internationally recognized company. You can be found in Europe and the United States and Canada, and it's available in over 10,000 cities. The price, it's always a flat fee. There's no fluctuating prices. Actually, no, it's false. There is fluctuating prices depending on the time of day and how many drivers are available at the moment. Uh, you can also purchase luxury or standard rides, so it kind of goes up on what ride you want. If you just go with the classic Uber X, it'll be a lot cheaper than going with Uber Black. And if you go with Uber Green, it'll also be more expensive than the Uber X. Next slide, please. Okay, so the next part of the marketing mix, um, first product. Uber does not sell a tangible product like most companies. Instead, they use their network of drivers and technology to provide various services that run through smartphone apps. Um, their original service was ride sharing, as we mentioned. Uber X, Uber Pool, and Uber Comfort are just a few of the examples of different um, rides that cater to different customers' preferences. Um, they also started uh, Uber Eats 
which is a food delivery service, and they have things like Uber Freight that matches carriers to shippers, and Uber for Business that's built for workers. And then the promotion, Uber started out with a word of mouth referral process that worked very well. And once they became more established, they started using other strategies like promo codes and discounts. Um, Uber wants to satisfy everyone involved in their company, so they provide promotions for both drivers and customers. Promotions for drivers include a monetary award for signing up, and promos promotions for customers include a free ride credit for their first ride. And Uber also provides a newsroom and blog page on their website that provides easy access to recent and relevant news about the company as well as the activities that they're involved in. Um, next slide. So next is the SWOT analysis um, versus strength. So Uber has established itself as a pioneer and a global market leader. Their first mover advantages include being able to capture a vast portion of the rideshare market and having a strong brand identity. Um, second, Uber has significantly low costs compared to the com their competitors due to the fact that they don't own any of the vehicles used in their rideshare food delivery services. Um, Uber's strategy for pricing also sets them apart. They go along with economic principles to say that higher demand equals higher prices. And they focus on customer satisfaction through their ratings and metrics that they take on the apps. Um, they also have an adaptive quality unique to them and have been known to conform to business conditions well and have gained an appreciation around the world. And so Uber has some promising strengths, but they also have devastating weaknesses. Most importantly, Uber relies heavily on drivers, consumer data, and the inter internet. The company has to constantly please drivers and ensure rightful treatment. Um, in addition, the increase in customer privacy laws indicates that Uber could have had to give up some of their consumer data collection, which would make it hard for their business to run smoothly. Um, the dependency Uber has on the internet and smart devices not only makes it impossible to reach possible potential customers who do not have access to the internet and aren't tech savvy, but also creates problems when considering growing to undeveloped nations. Next, Uber has also had substantial losses due to criticisms, such as the way they treat women and the security with their drivers. And finally, scandals and sexual harassment involving drivers have come to reflect badly on Uber's reput reputation. Um, next is their opportunities. The company can take advantage of new technology like artificial intelligence and they can success, if they can successfully engineer self-driving car, it would decrease spending and the dependability as well as increase profits. Furthermore, Uber knows that customers are unsatisfied with the inefficient taxi system. And to capitalize on this opportunity, they use their rating and review system to keep customers' needs and concerns satisfied. Another opportunity is the widespread use of internet. Um, internet is spreading to different parts of the world, which means that Uber can also expand to these new places and widen their customer base. Uh, they can also not only expand their services, but they can expand their modes of transportation and they've already launched their Uber Chopper in many countries and have ideas for a bus service. And lastly, the Uber's threats. Um, first, the company has risks involved with internet connection. If for some reason the internet goes down or is slow in a particular area, they could face significant losses. They've also had to deal with increased competition, especially from Lyft, and drivers have low profit margins, which makes it difficult for them to stay with the company. Um, the drivers have also tried to form trade unions, which have failed because the drivers are technically not employees. They're considered independent contractors. And Uber has dealt 
with many lawsuits over issues such as wages and lack of wheelchair accessible options. And lastly, Uber has the responsibility to keep all of information they collect from their customers safe and prevent misuse and data breaches. Next slide. Okay. So like Uber, there are multiple other innovative alternatives to taxis and private tra transportation systems. Um, one of them is Lyft. Um, Lyft was founded by Logan Green and John Zimmer in the year of 2012 in the city of San Francisco, California. Um, Lyft has been operating in hundreds of cities just like Uber in Canada and in the United States for the past eight years. Um, and they leave behind happy customers while doing so. Um, Lyft came out with its official app in 2012, letting their customers know of the driver's arrival time and also giving them like an estimated cost in advance. Um, not only does Lyft offer online websites to their customers, but they also offer promotions and ride discounts and Lyft credit. Um, Lyft also offers like different like promotions such as percentage discounts and fixed promotions. Um, aside from those, uh, their websites also share that the company has set um, vehicle like requirements and you can go check those out on there. Um, Lyft, unlike our fellow competitor Uber, has a slightly cheaper transportation rate um, per mile. Not only does Lyft offer cheaper transportation, but it also offers a variety of ways that can help um, passengers tell whether or not they're getting into the correct vehicle. Uh, Lyft originally uh, identified themselves with these big pink fuzzy mustaches and they also used like um, logos and other decals to show who they were. They also used this um, amp which is a light that corresponds to a light on your phone or a color on your phone so you'll know which app that or which car that you're getting into. Um, Lyft, just like Uber, also got into the food delivery business with their fast food partner, Taco Bell. Um, this inspired a new feature on the app called Taco Mode, but however, customers did complain um, of the messiness and dissatisfaction in their cars. Um, both companies have been dealing with a lot of the same issues with regards to reduce, reducing sexual assault incidents, car crashes, and trying to maintain their good guy image. Um, in 2019, Uber did release a safety report providing that 6,000 sexual assault cases were filed. Um, everyone expected Lyft to follow DCA, but um, Lyft never did provide any reports themselves. Um, one could argue that Lyft, or one could argue that Uber may be user friendly, like more user friendly than Lyft for releasing the reports, um, but neither companies do condone or um, stand any tolerance of sexual assault. Okay. Uber and Lyft have done everything that they possibly can to guarantee and ensure the satisfaction and safety of their customers. But I think, well, we think it would be smart for them to adopt more um, options. Um, some of our options that we think would be a good idea are adopting and allowing 24 seven cameras in their vehicles, um, dash cams or other recording devices to record rides, um, but that is not enforced by Uber or by Lyft. Um, by raising the need and by enforcing like drivers to use cameras that could help provide an extra safety barrier um, between drivers and passengers. Um, but Uber should be developing a marketing strategy that clearly shows like what their main priorities and goals are. Um, something that would be beneficial to their company is to ensure good communication and relationships between their customers and their company. Um, Uber should also be able to take their relationship with the customers to a whole new level by promising them that they're doing everything that they can to take the proper safety um, precautions. Um, they can do this by embracing new ideas that will set them apart from their competitors. And next slide. Okay, so our new innovation that we came up with was um, better overall safety. Um, these are important measures to take to go against the public's negative views of the company um, such as the negative views from the scandals and sexual harassment claims that we explained. Um, making customers feel safe is very important and especially with um, rising competitions from companies like Lyft and as added bonus to using a decal on the driver's cars, the company may be able to increase their brand recognition. And lastly, giving customers control over their ride with the choice of gender 
may increase the levels of customer satisfaction and put Uber ahead of their customer, competitors. Next slide. So the marketing mix of this new product. So the product, as was previously stated by Tori, kind of gives better safety and security for the passengers and the drivers. We're trying to, with this, we're trying to make the passengers more comfortable in the car and kind of allow them to feel more safe. So to promote this item, what they want to do is they're going to go through social media apps and streaming services. The place is going to be everywhere in the U.S. to start, and then we want to go with it nationwide and then internationally wide, trying to get to Canada and Europe, kind of where Uber is, has a foundation in. And for the price of it, it will be no additional fee for the drivers or passengers. It will cost an extra $45 just for the dash cams alone for each car that Uber will have to provide. Uh, next slide, please. So as Tori stated, it is a safety product. There, Uber needs to be instituting cameras, better employee background checks, uh, the ability to choose the gender of the driver to make some drivers feel more comfortable, and some more easily visible decals. As you, as most Uber or Uber cars have, they do have the Uber sticker, as you can see in the right with that picture, but if it's a busy street and you're kind of in a rush, it can be hard to see that symbol, and we want to make sure you're getting in the right car with the right person to take you to the right destination. Uh, next slide, please. So for promotion, we have to, our Uber needs to focus on targeting different age ranges. So that's kind of like the youth culture and the old culture and the middle culture. So to do this, we think they should do use social media apps such as Snapchat, TikTok, and Instagram, and uh, Facebook for our older users. Uh, newspapers, I know it's kind of old school and they're kind of going out to date, but you can get the New York Times on your iPad. You can get newspapers digitally now. So if you put it in there, someone might see it and go, oh. And then billboards, everyone sees billboards driving down the, down the highway. You're going to see one and they might stop and look. And then TV and YouTube ads because everyone loves YouTube. And we'll offer it to different streaming services too, like Hulu, most ones that have ads in there as well. And uh, next slide, please. Right, implementation and evaluation. Uber should be marketing that their number one concern is customer and driver safety so that their target audience is reassured that the company's priorities are in the right place. Uber should be taking advantage of promoting their marketing ideas and plans on social media, like Brian had just said. Um, Uber really benefited, benefited their company when they decided to post their report on their total amount of sexual assault cases. And this showed that their priorities are centered and that they are trying to be more user friendly for their customers. Um, Uber also should be advertising their goals on social, on social media on how they plan on taking um, future precautions. Uh, like increasing safety. Um, some precautions are effective background checks, um, showing clear identification with decals or logos, performing better background, oh, yeah, um, performing better background checks, creating and giving out service, and allowing the option of picking your driver's sex. Um, all of these could potentially set Uber even farther ahead than their um, fellow competitors, while also incre um, increasing their positive reviews at the same time. Um, we also think Uber should um, release more surveys, which they can reflect on so that they can make future changes accordingly. And that is it. Thank you.